Hey, how's it going? Let's pick it up in Acts chapter 8 and read verses 26 through 40 and finish out that chapter. Now an angel of the Lord said to Philip, Go south to the road, the desert road, that goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. So he started out, and on his way he met an Ethiopian eunuch, an important official in charge of all the treasury of the Candake, which means queen of the Ethiopians. This man had gone to Jerusalem to worship, and on his way home was sitting in his chariot, reading the book of Isaiah the prophet. The spirit told Philip, go to that chariot and stay near it. Then Philip ran up to the chariot and heard the man reading Isaiah the prophet. Do you understand what you're reading? Philip asked. How can I, he said, unless someone explains it to me. So he invited Philip to come up and sit with him. This is the passage of scripture the eunuch was reading. He was led like a sheep to slaughter. And as a lamb before its shearers is silent, so he did not open his mouth. In his humiliation, he was deprived of justice. Who can speak of his descendants, for his life was taken from the earth? The eunuch asked Philip, Tell me, please, who is the prophet talking about, himself or someone else? Then Philip began with that very passage of scripture and told him the good news about Jesus. As they traveled along the road, they came to some water, and the eunuch said, Look, here is water. What can stand in the way of my being baptized? And he gave orders to stop the chariot. Then both Philip and the eunuch went down into the water, and Philip baptized him. When they came up out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord suddenly took Philip away, and the eunuch did not see him again, but went on his way rejoicing. Philip, however, appeared at Azotus and traveled about, preaching the gospel in all the towns until he reached Caesarea. So let's go back to verse 26. What's going on here? We're following kind of Philip was going to Samaria and preaching there, and we got that story with Simon the sorcerer, and so now... Philip is going uh, down south to the road, the desert road that, that goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. And then verse 27, as he's going, uh, going about, he meets this Ethiopian eunuch. And so God starts telling him some stuff. And so he says to go to that chariot and stay near it. And so uh, the, the Ethiopian eunuch was going to Jerusalem to worship. So there seems to be some indication here that uh, he has some understanding of the of the Old Testament, maybe he's reading the book of Isaiah, the prophet, and he must be reading it out loud as well, because then Philip ends up hearing what he's talking, uh, what he's reading. But he seems to have some kind of uh, spiritual base there. And then uh, verse 30, it says, then Philip ran up to the chariot and heard the man reading Isaiah, the prophet. Do you understand what you're reading? Philip asked. And so it seems that, you know, Philip is then obeying God and going by the chariot and seems to hear what he's reading. And in verse 31, it says, how can I, he said, unless someone explains it to me. So he invited Philip to come up and sit with him. And so Philip then gets to hear the passage of scripture the eunuch was reading. And what is it? I mean, uh, just an amazing passage of scripture that's talking about Jesus. Let's read that again. It says, and this is talking about Jesus. He was led like a sheep to the slaughter. And as a lamb before its shears is silent, so he did not open his mouth. And so that's talking about Jesus in the sense that he went to the cross and then also he did not open his mouth. Um, you can also see that throughout the Gospels where uh, where Jesus, you know, did not, you know, start doing this huge, like take this big defensive posture or something like that. But often he did not open his mouth at all. It also says in his humiliation, he was deprived of justice, certainly deprived of justice because, man, I mean, he was given the death penalty when he did no wrong. Who can speak of his descendants for his life was taken from the earth? And so the eunuch asks him, tell me, please, who is the prophet talking about himself or someone else? And I could just imagine on Philip's face when uh, when he hears the passage of scripture that the eunuch is reading, uh, just the lightning of his face, because how exciting would it be to know that, oh, that one's talking about Jesus. And I, I want to tell you about that guy. And so Philip begins telling him about that passage of scripture and telling him about the good news of Jesus. And so uh, as they're continuing to do that, then uh, they end up seeing some water and the eunuch is baptized and wants to get baptized. He's baptized. Um, and then verse 39, when they came up out of the water, the spirit of the Lord suddenly took Philip away and the eunuch did not see him again, but went on his way rejoicing. Philip, however, appeared at Azotus and traveled about. And so uh, some people think that maybe Philip teleported here because it says he suddenly took uh, Philip away. And then in verse 40, it says, then he appeared at uh, Azotus. Um, I think it's possible that he just kind of left quickly. Um, I guess, I don't know. We'll find out in heaven whether he really did just teleport um, or whether he just kind of left quickly. But 
Uh, I think it's possible that he might just have left right after they uh, baptized him. And, uh, and so that's the story of the Ethiopian eunuch. What can we learn from this? Uh, let's follow God's voice. And we see here that Philip just gets a little, a little thing from the spirit that says, go to that chariot and stay near it. And then God just gets this just natural flow of events to happen afterwards where this guy ends up being saved. And, and what a cool thing. And what a neat thing too, if you followed God's voice before, uh, it's such an amazing feeling to see what God does from the fruit of that obedience. I know many, many years ago, uh, well, many, many, probably like five or six years ago, maybe six years ago, um, I was uh, working for this guy and ended up um, um, having some some things happen where I was able to talk to him about, about Jesus. And so um, I had this huge prompting. Um, I had just left work that day to kind of go back and see if he was still there and talk to him about Jesus and ended up talking to him about Jesus. And uh, in a couple, it was two weeks later, he ended up coming to church. And and it's such a cool thing, obeying God in his voice and then seeing the fruit of that happening. Um, it's so, so awesome. And so I just encourage you, follow God's voice, be listening to God's voice, obey God's voice. And if you want to hear more of God's voice, obey him and see what happens because there's such cool things that happens when we, uh, when we obey God and his voice. So let's just pray and let's ask God to speak to us more and also for the courage to be able to uh, obey him when he does speak. So let's pray. Lord God, I just thank you so much for your word. And I thank you so much that you speak to us and you speak to us in a variety of ways. And I just pray that for each person, we would be listening to your voice as you speak and that also you'd give us the courage and the boldness to be able to carry out whatever you're speaking to us, Lord God. Just help us to be people that are obedient to you, Lord God. We just thank you in Jesus' name we pray, amen.